Hello everybody, my name is Justin and welcome to the video. Here I will be talking in depth about the Ships and Rocks pack which is available on Unreal Engine 4 Marketplace. First I will talk about the Galleons and what modularity, what features do they have. Then I will move on to water material, talk in depth about the water removal technique and uh, the material itself. And then I will finish with uh, bringing up the Harbor pack and how is it complementary to this uh, Ships and Rocks. Okay, so let's start. Here we are in Unreal Engine 4. We have nine different types of galleons, Chinese junk, and lifeboat. Let's talk about modularity of these galleons. If you set the snapping to 500 with the world coordinates, you can then move bows and sterns closer to the middle so they match. If I undo this, I can also show you that this bow matches this middle and this bow matches this middle so there's a little variation overall nine combinations if if it happens that uh, the stern does not fit to the middle well it means that you should probably use a different middle or cover the hole with uh, other models such as planks now let's talk about the water material its customization and the water removal technique here, there is an example showing how the water is being removed from the interior of the boat. And responsible for this is Custom Stencil, with the value of 253. Now, this particular mesh I'm showing you here has the stencil, so if I move it around you can tell that it removes the water. Now, how to set up such stencil? In the properties, search for the custom. and you should have under rendering custom depth pass. You, you have to enable it and type in the value of 253. Let's see what it reads here. Boat removes water from inside using stencils 253 and 2. Then stencil number 2 could be any other stencil actually, other than 253 and 0. This value of 2 is actually the exterior mesh which shows the water back again from beneath the ship. To see the stencils, go to Buffer Visualization and Custom Stencils. Buffer Visualization can be found here. As you can tell, the boat right here didn't have any custom stencils, that's why it had water inside. And this one has. Every ship mesh comes with these uh, meshes, the interior mesh, which is supposed to have this custom value of 253, and the exterior one, which slightly extends away from the ship in order to get a more realistic effect from the bottom of the ship with the value of 2, 3, 4 or any other value. Let me show you the water material itself. This water bay is in the material instance, which means that you can track everything, how it's done, pretty nicely. First we have the fake depth. Basically it defines the pixel depth of your material. And what, how this works, it defines uh, this brightness, this color effect close to the shore and close to the objects, and the depth color. Here, you should define the water height plane. So if you click on your plane, which has some water material, you can see that it was positioned minus 210 centimeters in Z axis. So this is the value we input here. Next, we have... Uh, the water depth, how deep it has to be in order to transition from this color to this. Then we move to depth power, which basically defines how smooth the transition is going to be. Of course we have colors, which can be changed in real time, and the brightness. This is the general brightness of the entire uh, material. Let's move on to the normals, which give this specular effect. Here, in normals, the most important parameter is normal strength. If you up it, the specularity will become stronger and the, the water will be more rapid. The nice thing about this material is the stencil mask, which removes the water. By using simple mathematical function, which defines if the value of stencil is 253, then opacity is zero. And if the value of stencil is any different than 253, higher or smaller, then the water opacity is what you set it up to. For example, in my case it's 0.97. If 
you want players to be able to see more and uh, increase it or decrease it. Then we have the different types of waves and these are parameters which define them. This one is the most important. A, B, C, amplitude A, B, C and D, they define the water height. But the length of the waves are also quite important. The steepness, how uh, steep the wave is, you might uh, want to play with these if you want. And uh, as you can tell, there's a little bit of vertex coloring here. It defines the bigger waves if you, if you paint it with the red and blue without a green. If you paint with green and blue and uh, no red, it basically defines that there's no uh, waves, it, that there's no movement. You can also find these spots in the map if you, if you look carefully. Now, the tessellation multiplier basically optimizes the tessellation. It defines within what distance the tessellation will occur. Currently, it's set to 92 meters. Okay, let's talk about optimization now. In order to get higher FPS, you need to remember about few things. So these sails use cloth simulation, which is not very cheap. Make sure that you reduce the amount of sails. Plus, you can also change parameter of the sail. If you go to the properties, here, under cloth properties, uh, set the solver frequency and the stiffness frequency to the value around 70. The lower, the better for the performance, but more balanced here. We have a translucent water material which uses dynamic tessellation. You can either remove the tessellation entirely, but also make sure that you optimize the tessellation and the material properties, meaning reduce the distance within which the tessellation occurs. And make sure that there is no overlapping translucent materials nor decal materials in your scene. Uh, last but not least are wind entities. They are set to the point wind with the radius of values 160 meters right now. This 160 meters is basically uh, an output of your architecture in your scene. Make sure that the wind entity affects as many targets as required. I would like to talk about why harbor pack and ships and rocks pack are complementary to each other. Ships and rocks main focus is galleons, rocks, coral reef, while harbor pack shifts its focus onto modular wooden meshes which, def which allow you to create different pieces of architecture. So it's safe to say that both packs are complementary to each other. What you're seeing here, it's still not available on Unreal Engine 4. This will come in the next update. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in the assets, the links are in the description. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next video.